What's up guys, my hair Case Performance. Um, one of the problems that we've encountered obviously with uh, having a head gasket spacer uh, on the, the VR6 in particular, the one that we're building for the Garado, is it puts too much tension on the actual upper timing chain. So there's a couple of ways we've combated this. Uh, we spoke to the supplier where we got that from, they recommended shaving down this actual the guide rail here. Uh, basically you just get uh, sanding block you get those cork ones that you use for DIY and you get various different grades of sandpaper or ornament paper and you just basically smooth it uh, you, you sort of just shave it down a little bit but the biggest uh, the biggest thing that we've done to to try and reduce the too much tension on the chains because obviously too much tension the chains will break uh, premature failure uh, we've had to obviously modify the actual hydro tensioner here we've actually just taken and then we'll let the camera zoom in on that We've had to just take the leading edge off of that because it was actually touching the top timing cover here. So that's it here. Now we've actually milled out a section of timing cover here because what was happening was the even though we'd taken the leading edge off the hydro tensioner, what was happening was it was still being pretty much tight to the in, inside diameter of this cover. So we've now milled that. To allow this leading section to come back a bit so it takes some of the tension off the chain but also another problem that we're having is when you fully screw home the actual tensioning plug here is it, again it's still putting too much tension on it now this is obviously a bit of an issue so, well why don't we just remove the head gasket spacer one of the reasons why we fitted the head gasket spacer is to drop the compression ratio of the engine so it's a safer build uh, on pump fuel you have to remember this is a big cast iron block, they get hot, uh, and obviously heat is a big major factor with debt. Uh, and obviously it's been supercharged. Uh, so what we're going to basically do, because we can't screw the, the, the tensioning plug all the way till it butts up to the copper washer, we're going to add a, a few more copper washers. So what this will actually do is act like a manual timing chain tensioner that you get in the motorbike world. I'm a biker, uh, and a lot of the problems, a lot of the mass produced sports bikes are having is the automatic chain tensioners are failing at high RPM or very quick downshifts. So a lot of the guys are binning the automatic one. Obviously as the chain gets old, it stretches, it goes into its service cycle. The automatic tensioner then takes up that slack. But the problem is they're, they're not very sort of, they're not good enough and they're not reliable enough. So a lot of guys are fitting manual tensioners. Uh, and a lot of that is down to ear. When you tighten up the actual tensioner, you'll hear that the chain is either too slack, you'll be hearing a lot of uh, sort of notching sound in the background, uh, but again, you don't want it too tight because a too tight chain is going to break. So what I'll just show you quickly is now that we've got the upper guide chain in place, I still have to bolt this down, so that's what it says torque me for. Again, you can see the milled section here. And you can see the port for the actual tensioning plug. So what I'll do is, it's rude to turn you back to the camera, but please do me. So I will fit this. Now if the camera comes up here, we will see the tension. We've got a nice match slack on that chain we don't want to be getting that so fucking tight it'll play a you know a, a cord bounce a coin off of it whatever we also have a nice amount of slack down here again we don't want to run too much tension now i'll show you what happens when we screw tensioning plug in because i want it to make contact and maybe about a quarter turn preload onto this chain tensioner because like i said i want it too tight so I'm happy if the camera comes up here. You can see we've got a very adequate amount of tension on that chain. There's zero chance of that jumping. But also we have a bit of a gap that we have to fill because these are, uh, they get lubrication for obviously from the main oil supply, from the main oil gallery, from the head. So we then need basically a couple of copper washers in there. Again, I guess that tight stops it backing off, stops oil pissing out of there. And as you can see, we've still got a 
a decent amount of tension on that chain but also ultimately we have a good amount of slack on that chain as well because we don't want to run it too tight the reason why it's gone tight is because your two dating points between the crankshaft and the camshaft is now changed because the head gasket uh, we have two head gaskets in there about 1.5 mil each and we have a two mil head gasket spacer you've now changed that dating point so what happens is the chain then basically will run too tight if you were to just carry on fitting things the way it would have been before. So a little tip for you guys, uh, a little proviso for you when you are fitting hair gasket spacers, always check your chain chances. Don't just take it on gospel that, I'll just tighten it up and that's that. Because the chain will fail and you will end up bending valves because the timing's gone. So stay tuned guys, thanks.